Hugo Boss is a world-renowned fashion brand known for its luxurious and stylish clothing. However, the brand's success and reputation have been tarnished by its dark past, which is often overlooked or forgotten. The company's history is intertwined with the rise of the Nazi regime in Germany, and its founder played an active role in the party's activities. The story of Hugo Boss's past is a haunting reminder of the dangers of fascism and how even the most prominent brands can be complicit in evil. As we delve into the history of Hugo Boss, we will uncover the disturbing truth about the brand's origins and its founder's actions during one of the darkest periods of modern history. We will explore how Hugo Boss became a supplier of uniforms for the Nazi party and how its founder contributed to the party's activities. Additionally, we will examine how the company has attempted to distance itself from its past and how its legacy still affects the fashion industry today. The Dark Past of Hugo Boss is a cautionary tale, a reminder of the atrocities committed during the Nazi regime, and how even the most successful companies can have a sinister past. The truth about the brand's history may be shocking, but it is essential to uncover the past to prevent similar events from happening in the future. As we continue to explore the intriguing history of Hugo Boss, we'll discover what lies beneath the surface of the glitz and glamour of their world-famous brand. Hugo Ferdinand Boss, the founder of the company, started his own clothing business in Metzingen, Germany in 1924, but his love for fashion started at an early age. His parents owned a lingerie shop, which was where he got his experience from. This would eventually spark his passion for the fashion industry. So in the coming years, he eventually took over the shop from his parents. However, he's got bigger plans for his life, as he wanted to sell more than just lingerie. At first, he sold shirts and jackets, but more importantly, workwear for laborers, police officers, and members of the military. The brand's early success was due to its ability to provide affordable and durable clothing for the working-class individuals in Germany. But the aftermath of World War I put the business in a dire state, as Germany had to pay 132 billion gold marks, or more than $500 billion today, to the victors of the war in monetary compensation, which wrecked the German economy. The once booming economy was now in shambles, and inflation had soared to unprecedented levels. People were struggling to make ends meet, and luxury items like clothing were no longer a priority for most. As a result, his clothing business was barely surviving, and he knew he had to take drastic measures if he wanted to keep his dream alive. Despite the challenges, he was determined to succeed, but in order to do so, he would have to make a deal with the devil. In the early 1930s, with the rise of the Nazi party, Boss recognized a lucrative business opportunity in producing uniforms for one of the most infamous political organizations in modern history. He was very quick to take advantage of the opportunity and became an active member of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, NSDAP, or more commonly known as the Nazis. He also joined its various organizations, including the Sturmabteilung, SA, which was the paramilitary wing of the Nazi party, the Schutzstaffel, SS, which was another paramilitary organization responsible for carrying out many of the regime's most brutal actions. By the mid-1930s, Hugo Boss had become the exclusive supplier of uniforms for the SA and the SS, as well as for other Nazi organizations, such as the Hitler Youth and the National Socialist Motor Corps. But to fulfill these contracts, Boss relied heavily on forced labor, which included prisoners of war and concentration camp inmates from when the Nazis began their conquest. Many of these workers were subjected to inhumane conditions, forced to work long hours with little food or rest. The working conditions were dangerous, and the workers were often subject to abuse and mistreatment by their overseers. Despite this, Hugo Boss continued to profit from their labor, producing high-quality uniforms for the Nazi war machine. The uniforms were an essential part of the Nazi propaganda machine, projecting an image of power and strength that was intended to intimidate and impress both Germans and foreigners alike. However, the uniforms also had a more sinister purpose, as they were worn by men who carried out some of the most heinous crimes of the Nazi regime. The SS in particular was responsible for running the concentration camps, where millions of people were systematically murdered, including Jews, Romani people, LGBTQ individuals, and others who were deemed undesirable by the regime. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, be sure to watch our other video about the Holocaust nobody talks about. Despite Hugo Boss's controversial involvement with the Nazi regime, the company continued to profit until the end of World War II. However, with the conclusion of the war, the company's fortunes changed, and its golden days came to an end. After the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945, the country was occupied by Allied forces, and the 
process of denazification began. As part of this process, individuals and companies were investigated for their involvement with the Nazi regime. Hugo Boss was one of the companies investigated for its ties to the Nazis. The company's production of SS and other uniforms for the Nazi regime was well known, and evidence of its use of forced labor had also come to light. As a result, Hugo Boss was classified as a trading with the enemy company, and its owner, Hugo Ferdinand Boss, was deemed a follower of the Nazi party. In the immediate aftermath of the war, Hugo Boss struggled financially. With the German economy in ruins and the country divided, the company had difficulty finding customers for its products. Additionally, the denazification process led to Boss being temporarily stripped of his voting rights and his ability to run a business. Unfortunately, Boss died in 1948, and he wasn't able to see the change in his company's fate decades later. But the story doesn't end there. The company was taken over by his son-in-law, Eugen Holy. However, Holy was faced with a difficult situation as the company's association with the Nazi regime became more apparent. The company's reputation was severely tarnished, and many people were hesitant to purchase their products. Holy was determined to turn things around and worked hard to distance the company from its past. With that in mind, he shifted the focus of the business to men's suits that were very comfortable to wear and made only using premium materials. As a result, the company eventually had regained its status as a fashion leader in Germany. Although Eugen Holy played a significant role in establishing the groundwork for Hugo Boss, it was his two sons, Jochen and Uwe Holy, who took the company to new heights. In 1969, after years of hard work and dedication, Eugen retired and the reins of the company were handed over to his sons. Under their leadership, the brand underwent a major transformation. They started by expanding the product line and creating new designs that catered to different markets. They also set their sights on international expansion, targeting the United States and other countries in Europe. To achieve this, they invested heavily in marketing and advertising, creating bold campaigns that captured the attention of consumers with famous stars and celebrities at the time, such as Sylvester Stallone serving as a model for the brand. They also sponsored major sporting events, including Formula One races and golf tournaments, to increase brand awareness. The strategy paid off, and by the 1980s, Hugo Boss had become a global fashion powerhouse with stores in major cities around the world. Their sleek and stylish designs had earned a reputation for luxury and sophistication, and their brand had become synonymous with high-end fashion. Despite these efforts, the company's ties to the Nazi regime continued to haunt it in the post-war era. In the late 1990s, Hugo Boss began to face public scrutiny over its dark past and its involvement with the Nazi regime. The company was criticized for its use of forced labor during the war and for profiting from the production of uniforms for the SS and other Nazi organizations. As a result, the company launched an internal investigation into its history and hired historians to examine its past. In 1999, the company released a statement acknowledging its history and expressing regret for its actions during the war. The statement read, We are aware of the role that Hugo Boss played during the National Socialist regime, both through the company's founder and the company itself, which at that time was managed by Hugo Ferdinand Boss. We are deeply ashamed of the fact that Hugo Boss was involved in the system of forced labor and that it supported the National Socialist regime. Since then, Hugo Boss has taken significant steps to acknowledge its dark past and address the damage caused by its association with the Nazi regime. The company has donated 1.5 million euros to the Anne Frank Foundation and has also established the Hugo Boss Prize, which supports contemporary art and recognizes artists who make a significant contribution to the cultural landscape. In addition, the company has partnered with organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League and the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum to support education and awareness about the Holocaust. Hugo Boss has also implemented strict guidelines to ensure that its supply chain are free from any form of forced labor, child labor, or human trafficking. The company regularly audits its suppliers and has set a target of using 100% sustainable cotton in its products by 2025. In 2019, Hugo Boss was ranked second in the Fashion Transparency Index, a global ranking that assesses the transparency of fashion brands in their supply chains and practices. While it cannot erase its past, Hugo Boss is committed to ensuring that such atrocities are never repeated and is dedicated to promoting human rights and ethical business practices.
businesses. The company's efforts to address its dark history and promote positive change serve as an example for other businesses to follow in creating a more just and responsible society. In conclusion, the history of Hugo Boss is a reminder of the dark side of the fashion industry and the consequences of turning a blind eye to past atrocities. While the company has made efforts to acknowledge and address its past, the legacy of its association with the Nazi regime remains. Hence, it is important to remember that behind the glitz and glamour of a brand, there could lie a dark story beneath it.